Welcome back. Our chickens have been breeding. Made a couple of tweaks here. I found that by adding half slabs here, I can prevent these guys from escaping quite so easily. We've managed to fill up this chicken gun. Let's see. Let's see what we get. Yeah, I think we got 15. And over here, I've been breeding them. So over here, we've got apparently about 40 of them. Well, hello, boys and girls. Welcome back. This is episode 15 of Fog's World. Now, lately, we've been kind of drifting from episode to episode without what so much of appears as a direction. Well, believe it or not, I actually have had a long-term plan in mind. I've just neglected to share it with you. So uh, let's rectify that, shall we? Here's where we're heading. So uh, one of the things that I'd really like to do is I'd like to get the Endermen out of this base. They're, they're kind of a nuisance. Now, I knew that would be the case when I built this grinder. Um, so I'm not surprised by that. But uh, I do have uh, a plan to eventually get them out of the base. It's going to require converting the grinder and whatnot so that it doesn't spawn them. Um, however, at the moment, they're our best supply of uh, ender pearls, and I, I really want ender pearls. So I'm not quite ready to get rid of them yet. So what that means is we need to get another supply of ender pearls before we get rid of the endermen. And, of course, the best supply of Ender Pearls is the end. However, we're playing hardcore, so we can't go to the end until we're prepared to defeat the dragon. Now, I will grant you the dragon's not too terribly tough, but still, I'd, I'd rather stack the deck in my favor as much as possible. And that means I'd like high-level armor, I'd like high-level weapons, I'd like potions, and so on. And... and Hence, our construction of a potion lab. Now, uh, our potion lab right now is lacking some reagents, and we need to stock it better. One of the seriously important missing components of our potion lab is uh, spider eyes, and as well as fermented spider eyes. Now, our mob grinder will give us spiders, but it doesn't give us spiders in a form where we actually can kill them. Uh, instead, they're usually killed by either the drop or the lava. And that means they won't drop eyes, because they'll only drop eyes when the player kills them. So we need a spider grinder. Now, it so happens that we have a spider spawner down below, and uh, so today's project is going to be to turn that spider spawner into a spider grinder. The other thing that we really need in order to get uh, high-level uh, weapons is an XP grinder. Now, while a spider grinder will get us some XP, and we also have a uh, we also have a nearby um, zombie spawner, which will get us XP as well eventually. And and you know we'll do something with that soon, maybe even today. Um, what we really want to do is we really want to build our blaze farms because blaze give us the best xp for the buck right now so uh soon we'll build a blaze farm but first i think we need to focus on getting those spider eyes get that supply of spider eyes up so today's job will be to go and do something with that spider spawner so let's go down to the spider spawner and see what we can do there well, here's our spider spawner. I've done a little bit of prep work. I've opened up an 8x8 area around this spawner. The spiders here will spawn from there, uh, one above the spawner, to one below the spawner. These mobs are only one high, so you only need to clear out one above and one below. Uh, we're going to build a water channel for these guys that comes down here, and a kill area right about here. And uh, I've put in some overhead lighting, and I've done some very preliminary wiring. Right now, these are all wired together to a switch up on the ceiling there. Uh, there's a walkway over to the side here that leads up to the top. And I've sealed off this part of the stronghold so that uh, we can't be bothered. See, he can stay over there and 
make all the noise he wants. He can't touch us. So we're all between iron doors and iron bars, so we're completely sealed off from the outside world. No need to worry about things surprising us here. So let's get our water channels down. I think that's going to be the first thing we need. Um, we're going to need signs along here. Now spiders are a particularly nasty mob to deal with because they like to climb and they can climb just about anything. In fact, I'm not sure if there is any block in the game that they are not capable of climbing. I'm pretty sure that whatever it is, they can climb it. So they're really nasty to deal with. And uh, I think I have a plan for dealing with them. I think this is going to work. But uh, you never really know until you've done it. Because uh, <laughs> quite frankly, spiders suck. <laughs> they're really a pain in the neck. But we're going to give it a try here. Uh, I think we'll be okay here. So we'll lay down some water here. So this water is going to push them over to the steps over here. Now, we're relying a bit on the, on the idea that spiders, first of all, when they spawn in midair, they're going to fall. They can't climb up this lip. So they can't climb past that edge. So that'll help, unless they've jumped. But they can't really jump when they're in water. So they shouldn't, they shouldn't jump. We should be okay with that. Uh, of course, no other mobs can spawn on, no mobs can spawn on the water, so we don't have to worry about things spawning in here other than spiders. Um, yeah, they, they, the water should push them over to here. We're also relying on the fact that they can track us through walls, so the fact that we're standing over here, even if the water isn't 100% efficient at pushing them, they're going to have a natural tendency to want to come after us anyway. Now the whole point of this is we have to get the mobs nine blocks away from that spawner right there so that they won't impede future spawning. Otherwise we're going to have uh, spiders spawning. Uh, we're going to have inefficient spawning because uh, after if there are so many spiders near this spawner then it won't spawn anymore. So let's see, this should push us all the way to here, and then we're just going to put signage, signs of here to uh, push them the rest of the way. Right there, and ah, I need another sign. Thought I'd made enough. Obviously, I did not count quite enough. Thought I'd made ten, but I only made nine. And we need one more. Whoops. Turning too fast, turning too fast. That should work. Okay, so now we can wall this part up. Right to here. We're going to put some steps right here again. Right there. Now, like I said, spiders have a desire to climb. They don't like being down low. They want to come up at you. So we're going to take advantage of that and have them come up to get to us. We have to be careful, by the way, when removing these blocks. We're close enough to the stronghold, uh, to the, sorry, to the end portal. The end portal's really only a few blocks that way. So uh, we have to be careful because we're going to end up with... Uh, if we're not careful, we're going to end up with, uh, we, we can occasionally cut into blocks that have, um, that's the word I'm looking for, silverfish, that have silverfish in them, so we have to be careful about that. All right, you know, I think we're ready to do a quick test here. This is uh, not the final deal, but let's just real quick, we'll put some bars there so they can't get through at us. And uh, let's go ahead and let a few of them out and see what happens. Come up here. Oh, spiders right away. Turn it back on so that they don't come after us anymore. And these guys should very quickly come after us. Unless... Yeah, see, there we go. See, I, I didn't make it big enough. That's what we're checking here. There we go. 
There we go. Excellent. Now, these guys are eventually going to have water to push them the rest of the way here, of course. Uh, we, we didn't put in all of our water. So, actually, let's go ahead and do that. Let's put in the rest of the water. Uh, I have a silk touch pick here, so I can get that. Get those blocks. Spiders being too wide makes things kind of convenient. They, they can't get out there. Excellent. And now we can put our, block, our glass back. And there we go. All right, let's try that one more time. Make sure these guys go where we want them to go. Eventually, I'll wire that up to a switch over here by the kill room, but for now, I just want to get things working. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, right away. Excellent. They're very quick. Good. Excellent. Right, I've done a little bit of work here. I've fleshed out the kill chamber a little bit. These are just some iron bars over here. This is where the killing will happen. I've added some pistons over there. These are stairs down there. This is, uh, of course, a regular block. If I throw this switch here, it closes those pistons down there. That's nothing fancy going on there. There is a little bit of a trick here to split that line so that I can very easily work both of those pistons without working this one. This switch here controls that piston there. That's the killing piston. Let me show you how this is going to work. So if I come up here, throw this switch, that'll spawn some spiders. Uh, normally that will be left on, spawner control on. See, there's our first little customer. Oh, here comes someone else. Oh, could we get two of them? Now, when there's a lot of spiders, they'll all get pushed up in here. But at the moment, we just have these two. So if I throw this switch, then uh, he uh, gets wedged up by that guy eventually. Usually. There we go. Sometimes he doesn't. Usually he does. Stairs are... are um, transparent blocks so they don't suffocate mobs so if a mob gets trapped down there not really a problem then when that's closed this piston here will be closed suffocating the spiders now you can see that that suffocation damage actually will kill them but what we're going to do is we're going to add a timing circuit over here so that we only suffocate them for so long so imagine something like maybe that and get them down to one hit kills. Now I cheated and used a sword there, but uh, we'll get them down to exactly one hit with a punch. So now all we have to do is come back in there and we're going to wire up our timing circuit. So if I pull this switch, then those close and then that closes. And even if I release this switch, he stays closed until something causes this torch here to turn off and back on. And that will open up that torch. Open up that block. Yes. All right. So now it's just a matter of putting in all the timing circuits. And we need, let's see, how many? One, two, three, four, five. I think it's 18. And that should do the trick. All right, so we throw the switch, those close, that closes for a while. 
that should have been a pulse. We were supposed to run that through a monostable circuit, and we didn't do it. Okay, we'll fix that. Okay, <laughs> I think we got it now. All right, let's try it. There we go, we got our single tick pulse, our single four tick pulse, and it breaks that. Does our feedback loop work up there? It does. So our kill block stays in. Tracks, we're good. Okay. All right, we should be good now. Here, let's uh, do something here. Don't want to keep falling into that. Half slabs uh, don't break redstone, so we can just cover that like that. Walk right past it. We're fine. Not a worry. Let's turn you off. Can't fall in here because of the because of the the uh, iron bars. Turn the water off. I mean, turn the lights off. A few spiders in here. This should be just perfect. Be good. Whoops. Well, it would have been if he had been high enough. But he was not. Wait for that to retract. Usually you want to let more spiders get in here than that. Then we one punch him. He dies. We open the gate and allow more in. And we can come over here and collect the drops. Excellent. Excellent. Isn't that lovely? All right, I know I went kind of fast here and fumbled around a bit while I was building this thing. Let me give you a quick little tour and let you have a better look at it so that you can see how to build this yourself. Um, so we already explained all of this. We've got two pistons here pushing stairs, two pistons over here pushing stairs, and a lever that closes those. That, that part's pretty simple. This piston here pushes a block. It's controlled by that torch up there. The reason we have a torch up there is so that it won't interfere with these guys down here. So far, so good. Very simple. Now this is where it gets a little more interesting. Um, this right here is a monostable circuit. There's a sticky piston under there facing up. When this turns on, it forces the sticky piston to extend, which allows a short pulse through before breaking the connection. So we end up with a one tick pulse on this side. This one tick pulse comes into here, into this repeater, which feeds back through here. So what's going to happen here is this is a, uh, this is a feedback loop that is going to keep the redstone here powered for as long as this block remains in place. And as long as this redstone is powered, that piston will be extended, which means we'll be suffocating spiders. Now, when this goes high, it also sends a signal right to here. This is another monostable circuit, exactly like that one. There's a sticky piston down there. When power reaches this point, it causes the sticky piston to extend, which lets a pulse through. This time it's a four tick pulse, and it goes through exactly 18 repeaters from here to there, all set at four ticks. When that single pulse makes its way all the way through here, it will hit this block, which will turn this torch off, causing this piston to retract. And then when the pulse goes away, the piston will extend again. And that breaks this feedback loop just long enough to allow that piston to retract again. So it's, it's that simple. Now there are slightly more efficient ways to build this, but this is a pretty easy way to do it, and it doesn't use too many repeaters, so I'm kind of happy with it. Let's give it one more try, collect ourselves some spider eyes. Whoo, you guys are loud. And then we just whack these guys.
if we can reach them. There we go. When we whack them all, all the drops fall in there. When I release this, the water's going to push all the drops against the wall, and I can just walk right over here and collect them. And, yeah, occasionally you'll take a hit from a spider, but who cares? <laughs> so there you go. And we have a pile of spider eyes already. We'll come over here. I'll pop them in the ender chest so that I can put them upstairs. And, yeah, sure, we'll put string there, too, although I'm not sure why I care. And now I have one more thing that I wanted to do uh, before we call it good today. Before I go, I thought I'd uh, do one more quick project. And this one I did mostly off camera, but I wanted to quick show you this. And uh, I mentioned that I had a zombie spawner. And uh, this is the zombie spawner, of course. I've hollowed this out. This is an 8x8 room centered about the zombie spawner. Um, just so you know, uh, this is the same as every other thing we've done. You got, uh, depending on the direction you're facing, if you're fa in facing one and facing two, you go four spaces out. In facing zero and facing three, you go three spaces out. One, two, three. And center an eight by eight room around that. Put a line of... Uh, Line of water over there. You got to be two, at least two above the spawner for the zombies to spawn at maximum efficiency. Leave one space below the spawner, and then you put your water. So all of those push over to here, which pushes over to a water trough there, which pushes down under there. And here, let me seal this up again. And then we'll go down, and I'll show you what's below. So those guys come right to here. There's a piston back in here. Let's remove this. There's a piston right there with a half slab to block this off so we can cut off more zombies and keep them from falling in here. This just dumps them right here. There's a sign here to keep this water from going any farther. You've got to make sure this space right here is at least nine away from the room so that uh, zombies don't... Uh, so that zombies don't inter interfere with the spawn rates over there. We'll put our half slab back here. We've got a half slab here with a block above, so they can't get through here. This switch right here closes that half slab off. This switch right over here turns off the lights. Let's hit that. And then right here is where the magic happens. This is our mob softener. This is about the simplest mob softener you could possibly build. We have a dispenser with a lava bucket in it. Hey, look, we've already got zombies. Hi there. Aren't you cute? Yeah. Be quiet, I'm talking to people. Okay, so we have a lava bucket inside this dispenser. We put a button on the dispenser just like we did with our chicken farms. Remember that? Vine, vine. Knock out this block, put the dispenser in, put the button on the vine, remove the vine, you're good. Now behind this, all you have to do is put one repeater set to one tick and one repeater set to four ticks. They don't have to point to anything. Just put them there. That's all you have to do. Make sure they're a block above so they won't burn the zombie drops. Whew, getting loud here. Once you got enough zombies there, cut off the influx. You can let the spawner keep going. They'll back up behind that half slab. You'll be fine. Then just punch the button. It dispenses just enough water. I mean, sorry, just enough uh, lava to set them on fire just long enough that they'll take lava damage and fire damage. Then once they're done burning, you can walk up and... Hit them. Now, zombies are going to be two punch kills because zombies have a little bit of armor. So they're actually not a one punch t kill. They're a two punch kill. Uh, skeletons or creepers would be a one punch kill with this. Now, I would have loved to have used this mob softener with our skeleton spawner. I mean, with our spider spawner. I would have loved to have used this with the spider spawner. The reason I didn't is spiders have significantly less hit points. And even with a one tick pulse of lava damage and setting them on fire, it's going to do too much damage. So eventually you have to put out the fire in order to keep them from dying. And if you're going to go to that much trouble, well, goodness, you might just as well use a crushing trap instead of a lava trap. Because the whole point of using a softener like this is that it's just so drop-dead simple. There you go. 
Miguel. Two punch kill. That's all there is to it. And if you really want drops, you can walk right up there and get them. Of course, with zombies, I'm not sure I care about the drops. Rotten flesh, oh boy. I guess occasionally they're going to drop ingots, and that's good. But uh, there you go. So that is the simplest mob softener that I am aware of. Super, super simple. I mean, you're talking three blocks for a mob softener. I'll tell you, if you can't remember the formula for building that, there's something wrong with your memory. <laughs> well, well, guys, let's go up top, because we've got some XP to burn, and I need a new sword. Here we are up top again. We're going to do a full enchant, so we're going to bring up all of these, and we're going to bring up all of these. All 15 bookshelves. Put them all into a sword. Sharpness 3. Well, not as nice as my looting, but not bad. Well, our square sun is setting again, and we've completed all our projects for today. So, thank you once again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We will talk to you again next time.